you did basically what's called like a instant campaign. It started seven weeks ago. I've been hearing and reading about this incredible grassroots groundswell that would follow you or would just appear even 24 hours. You would say you would be somewhere and, and people would come. So just tell me a little bit about how this happened and maybe even just the experience of this. Well, thank you, Jan. I, I'm not sure how it happened. I mean, honestly, I, I've been a politician for, John, seven weeks. <laughs> And I knew, I knew that when I announced that uh, I would probably get some sort of bump because I've been in radio for 27 years. I've had a column ever since April of 1998. So I've written about 1,200 columns about the kinds of issues that were, in my opinion, important in the campaign. The rise of crime, the rise of homelessness, the rise in the cost of living, uh, power outages, uh, the fact that we haven't invested in our water infrastructure, all the issues we talked about during the campaign. But I had no blooming idea that men, middle-aged men, would come up to me crying during the campaign saying things like, thank you for saving us. You've given me hope. I was thinking about leaving for Texas, for Tennessee, for Florida. Now, if you win, I won't leave. I had no idea anything like that would happen. Uh, without trying to sound immodest, I, I was treated almost like a beetle. I mean, literally, we had, we had to break off people because we had to go to the next event because people were just fawning over me like this. I didn't anticipate that at all. I mean, I knew that I had built a relationship with my listeners uh, over, the, over the course of the 27 years I've been in radio, but I did not realize the, the level of intensity that I would spark by, by entering the race. I, I would be lying if I said otherwise. Well, about this instant election idea. I mean, seven weeks, it's almost hard to fathom. It feels like forever. I lose the track of the uh, passage of time here. But what is, you know, as someone who's been in these, uh, you know, in electoral politics for a long time, what, what is it like? How is that different than a normal election cycle? It's the worst nightmare you'd ever want. I, per, speaking personally, uh, uh, you, you need two years to plan a campaign. You need to interview your, your, your potential consultants. You need to do a lot of analysis and, and, and build a team. Uh, I would I just assume that Larry just had to almost overnight had to find people and maybe a lot of the good consultants were already taken by all these other candidates. And so I would not have wanted <laughs> that drill, but you gotta grab who you can, who, who you know. Um, and, and you know I know some of the staff, good people, uh, but boy, you got to jump right in. You got to raise money. You got to go to all these events. And because he was so popular, I, you know, I, I, every time I see you, I'd say, "Has your head exploded yet?" Because, <laughs> because of you know, oh no, I've just done ten interviews today on radio and TV. And it's like, holy Toledo! It's just you know. And then you got to go to the fundraisers. And then, you know, so it, it's a massive time commitment. So I guess the question I would ask Larry is, you know, how many hours of sleep did you get a day? You know, you know, John, re regarding my ego, uh, I would come home and uh, Nina would say, okay, Mr. Governor, take out the trash. <laughs> so so it, uh, it, it really didn't get, it, you know, uh, people have asked me about, you know, what happened on election night, and you're going you're gonna to ask that uh, in, in a minute. John, you, you know what the, what the map was in 2003 versus now. Uh, Gray Davis was recalled in 2003. At the time, there were 44% registered Democrats. Now there's 46%, which is a 5% increase. At the time, there were 16% registered declined to state or independent. Now it's 23%. That's almost a 50% increase. And the New York Times described independence in California as, quote, leaning left, close quote. There, in 2003, there were 35% registered Republicans. Now there's 24%. That's a decline of 33%. And still, in seven weeks, I got the same percentage of the replacement votes, 47%, as did Schwarzenegger with a much better map. And I, I campaigned only, thank you. And I campaigned, and, and the campaign was seven weeks long, and I was told, I think even you suggested this when we were talking, you said, you know, under the most optimistic scenario, it's gonna be hard for you to raise money. Uh, and other people suggested I might be able to raise 10 million, which would have been amazing. I raised 20.
Now, I still got outspent 10 to 1, according to State Senator Shannon, Sharp, uh, Shannon uh, Grove. We, we talked to her last night. She said they raised $230 million mm -hmm. against us. So we got outspent 10 to 1. And I did as well as Schwarzenegger did with a, with a much worse electoral map. And the, the votes are still counting. There's 24, 25 percent left. My feeling is the gap uh, between uh, the recall and, and no recall is going to get smaller and smaller. And my percentage is going to get higher. I think I'm ultimately in about 10 days or so, I will have a greater percentage in terms of the replacement side than did Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I, and I, thank you. And, and, I, and, and I never starred in Terminator. Yeah. You know, you know people, have asked, people have asked me what, what, are some of the lessons, what are some of the lessons I've learned. Uh, a few of them. Um, and then I'll let you ask the question since that's the way it's supposed to work. Um, one is only in America, only in America, Jan and John, only in America can you become, uh, a, only in America can a black person become president and become the face of white supremacy. Only, <laughs> only in America can that happen. The other thing I learned is you lose your voice and you gain 10 pounds. So. But, you, but you also, uh, with, with question number one, and that is, do you recall? 27 counties out of the 58 voted for the recall. Yeah. Merced is so close, it right. could be 28 out of 58 counties. Right. So if you look at the map at the Secretary of State's website, it's, it's, it's we have two Californias. Yeah, we're we kind of split right down the middle. You could have the west and, and, and the bottom part of the state as the liberal state, and you could have the north and the east portion of the state as the, as the conservative. A portion of the state, but you you did very well. We mean Bolshevik. Yeah, and 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 Jan, um, I knew when I got in the race. Nina and I talked about it. I said I said, if I am perceived as a threat, and I will be, the media will come down on me like the wrath of God, and they did. The LA Times was particularly egregious, but so was Politico, so was CNN, and so was the Sacramento Bee. The LA Times had an article that described me as, quote, the black face of white supremacy, end of quote. And the LA Times, when I was in Venice Beach, I'm sure you know about this, I was at a homeless camp, encampment, and a white woman wearing a gorilla mask threw an egg at me. Now, now by the way, a lot of people said uh, it was a gorilla mask, threw an egg at me, and I've said, at the risk of sounding sexist, how do we know it was a mask? <laughs> Jan is going, oh, he went there. But, but she, threw, she threw an egg at me, and the headline in the LA Times was, Elder Involved in Altercation in Venice. Altercation. And the picture was of me holding a campaign supporter like this, but it, but it looked as if I was slapping her. She's a daughter of Gloria Romero, the Democrat former state senator majority leader who crossed party lines to support me. It was her daughter, and I was greeting her, and I was greeting her, and the picture looked as if elder involved in altercation in Venice, as if I, the altercation was me slapping her. Yep. And she was so angry, her name is Soledad, she contacted the LA Times and was angry about the photograph. The LA Times removed the photograph, but didn't change the headline. Now, had this, just imagine, had Kamala Harris been campaigning, or Barack Obama, Senator Obama in 2008, and somebody, white woman in a gorilla mask, threw an egg at him? They'd be calling it a hate crime. Uh, there'd be an international manhunt. They'd be talking about it in Bangladesh. But nothing in the Washington Post, nothing in CNN, nothing, nothing in the Sacramento Bee, uh, and the LA Times coverage was what I said it was. The LA Times did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Now. I have never, ever, ever suggested that anybody should vote for me because I'm black, nor have I suggested people should vote against me because I'm black. And this business about being the first black uh, governor of California, I've never even thought about that because as far as I'm concerned, after the first black president, everything else is anticlimactic. Seriously, uh, in the mid-60s, uh, Martin Luther King was giving an interview to a British television. And this is uh, 66, 1966, two, two years after the Civil Rights uh, Act was passed. And King said, I am amazed at the progress racially we've seen in the last two years. Given how much progress we're making, I think a black president, we, we could have a black president in about 40 years' time or less. Well, almost on cue, Barack Obama was elected 40 years later. He didn't say there'd be a black CEO of, of a Fortune 500 company, and there have been several. 
He didn't say there'd be a black uh, 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 president of an Ivy League university. I went to Brown, and later on, a female, black female, became president of my university. He didn't say there'd be a black coach of Notre Dame, because one time, Jesse Jackson said, if they hired a black coach, it would change the whole mental construct. Well, there has been a black coach of Notre Dame. He didn't say 10% of Congress is going to be black. There'd be a, a governor of one of the original states of the Confederacy. There was, Doug Wilder. He didn't say any of that. He said president, meaning once that happens, it's done meaning we can then say we've realized his dream to the extent humanly possible uh, of people being able to be evaluated by content of character rather than color of skin. So when Obama got elected, I thought it was done. And so I'm fine with, with people not calling me the first this or first that, but you want to play that game. Front page article in New York Times, John, all about me, and it was negative, and never once mentioned my race, and never once mentioned that I would be the first black governor of California. And I'm fine with that. But on the same page, equally long article about, quote, the first female governor of New York, close quote, referring to the woman who succeeded only because Cuomo resigned. So it was relevant that she was the first because she has a D at the end of her name. I have an R at the end of my name, and I'm no, I'm no, I'm no longer black. It's amazing how that happens. <laughs> this is the kind of double standard I went through the whole eight weeks, and I can give you example after example after example. That was just one of the one, ones that was most egregious.